You're looking at two identical squares. Each square is seven units on a side. Seven times seven is 49, so each square contains 49 square units. You may count the little squares if you wish. Well, we're going to take the square on the left, and we're going to divide each side into a segment three units long and a segment four units long. The three unit segments are shown with blue segments, and the four unit segments are shown in orange. But since three plus four is seven, the square is still a seven by seven square. And then we're going to connect some points as shown. And it looks like we have a square within a square. And we do. It can be proven that the white space in the interior of the square on the left is indeed a square itself. We'll save that proof for another time, however. Now we're going to look at the square on the right. And we're going to make one change. On the top side, we're going to reverse the three-unit segment and the four-unit segment. And by doing that, we can set up these two squares, a three-by-three three square shown in blue with nine square units, and a four-by-four four square shown in red with 16 square units. Then we're going to do something I find interesting. We're going to make copies of all of those yellow triangles that we made in the square over on the left. Those copies are now shown at the bottom left. But we're going to take those copies and pretend they're puzzle pieces. And we're going to put them in the puzzle over on the right. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. And the square on the right, after we took out the blue and the red squares, was identical to the total space covered by the four yellow triangles in the square on the left. And that implies this equation that the blue square, which is 9 units, plus the red square, which is 16 square units, is equal to the area of the square within the square over on the left. So that means that 9 plus 16 we know is 25, and that tells us that the area of the square on the left is 25 square units. Another way to get that is to take two of those yellow triangles, put them together to make a rectangle as shown, 3 times 4 is 12, so each triangle is 6 square units. Now we're going to label all those triangles 6 square units. And over on the left, since the whole square was 49 square units, and the four yellow triangles are each 6, 4 times 6 is 24, we do 49 minus 24, and we also determine that the white space, the square within the square, is 25 square units. Let's fill in the rest of our areas. The numbers in the middle are square units, and of course the numbers on the outside next to each segment are units of length. And there's one more unit we're concerned about. The square within the square has 25 square units, and we know that the formula to get the area of a square is to multiply the side times another side. And in a square, since both sides are the same, we're looking for a number times itself, which equals 25. Well, we know that one. That's 5 times 5. So the length of the four black segments, each one of those, has a length of 5. And that brings us to this equation. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And that's mathematics' most famous theorem, the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem applies to right triangles. So let's have a little quick mini lesson on triangles. Here's an acute triangle. All three angles have measures less than 90 degrees, and there's a, an example. Here's an example of an obtuse triangle. One angle is greater than 90 degrees, and the other two angles have measures less than 90 degrees. But we're looking in this lesson at right triangles, shown at the bottom. One angle is equal to 90 degrees, and the other two angles are, have measures less than 90 degrees. And the little red box is a commonly used symbol that shows where the right angle is located in a right triangle. Well, here's how our right triangle looks. We label one side with the variable A, another side with the variable B, and the third side with the variable C. And more specifically, the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse, and the other two sides are called the legs. So in the Pythagorean theorem, A and B represent the lengths of the legs, and the variable C represents the length of the hypotenuse. Well, in our example, earlier in the lesson, we were looking at a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And let's see if those numbers fit in the Pythagorean theorem. We substitute 3 in for the letter A, 
4 in for the letter B and 5 in for the letter C, and we get 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. Here's some arithmetic. 9 plus 16 is equal to 25. Of course it is. It checks out. So our yellow triangles in the beginning of this lesson were right triangles, and they worked in the Pythagorean theorem. Well, let's look at some more triangles. I'm getting out my trusty ruler. I'm going to just make a right triangle, and I've chosen 9 centimeters for the leg on the bottom, and I've gotten another ruler out, and I've measured off 6 centimeters, and I've tried to make it a right angle. I hope you'll agree that looks like a right angle. I'm going to connect the end points of those segments to get the hypotenuse, and then I'm going to take a ruler and measure that hypotenuse, and it looks like it's about 11 centimeters long. If so, then 6 squared plus 9 squared should equal 11 squared. Well, let's see about that. 6 squared plus 9 squared is equal to c squared. Of course, 6 squared is 36. 9 squared is 81. We add 36 and 81, we get 117. Well, 11 squared is 121, so that's close. But what it means is, is that hypotenuse is not exactly 11 units long. We'll get out a calculator. We're looking for a number times itself that equals 117. And you may know that means a square root. So we type the square root of 117 into our trusty calculator, and we get that number shown, and we're going to round it off to the nearest tenth. But first we'll write it, square root of 117 is equal to C. That's the exact answer. And then when we round it, we get that 10.8 is approximately equal to C, the length of the hypotenuse. And we use the little wavy equal sign to represent the words approximately equal to. Let's look at another one. I've measured off 10 units and 6 units, and this time when I measure, it doesn't look like it comes out even. If you look there, you'll see that our length of the hypotenuse is between 11 and 12. Let's see if that's what it should be. We get 6 squared plus 10 squared. That gives us 36 plus 100, or 136. We're looking for the square root of 136. Well, we know that 11 times 11 is 121, and 12 times 12 is 144. So we're not surprised that our ruler says that the answer is between 11 and 12. Here's our trusty calculator. We write the square root of 136. We round off to the nearest tenth. And our hypotenuse in this example is about 11.7 centimeters. When A, B, and C are all counting numbers, it is called a Pythagorean triple. We've already looked at one Pythagorean triple in the yellow triangles. 3, 4, 5, because 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. In 2013, the narrator was excited on his birthday, May 12th. He figured out that a common way to write the date, May 12th, 2013, is 5, 12, 13. So his birthday that year was a Pythagorean triple. And then he got even more excited when he figured out that in 2017, his brother would have a birthday on August 15th, which was also a Pythagorean triple. Well, here's one more example before we close. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of a leg if we know the length of the hypotenuse and the length of one of the other legs. So here's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to substitute 8 in for b, one of the legs, and 10 in for c, the length of the hypotenuse. There we go. We got a squared plus 64 equals 100. If that's true, then we use what's known as the inverse operation, and a squared is equal to 100 minus 64, or 36. We can do that one in our head. 6 times 6 is 36, so a is equal to 6. This lesson presented the Pythagorean theorem. In words, it's... The sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. We were rooting for him, but the scarecrow didn't get it quite right. In words, it should be the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the length of the hypotenuse. The longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse. The other two sides are called the legs. When A, B, and C are all counting numbers, it is called a Pythagorean triple. Four Pythagorean triples shown in this lesson were 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, and 6, 8, 10.